Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another garden video. So today I'm going to be planting up two of my raised beds. So this bed right here and the one directly behind me. So these are my two raised beds that are going to hold fruits, some veggies, mostly strawberries, carrots, green bees, green bees, green beans, potatoes, and sweet potatoes. So behind me, I have uh, Yukon Gold seed potatoes and Beauregard sweet potatoes. And I'm going to be seeding the entire bed with those, except for one spot that is going to hold a sweet Alyssa. It is a white knight from Herman Winners that I picked up on the clearance rack. Sweet alyssum is a great companion plant to almost all of your fruits and vegetables. It helps keep um, aphids and other predators away, bugs. It also smells really good, um, so we like that. Then in this bed, I'm going to do one row of strawberries. So I have two varieties. I have these sweet berry strawberries that I picked up from my local store. They are already putting off runners. I'll have to decide if I'm gonna clip those or not. A lot of times people recommend you clip the runners for the first year so that they put as much energy as possible into the mother plant. But since I am using these grids here for these two beds, which are a one foot planting system, you can put four strawberries in each little square. So my goal is to do two of the sweet berries they are an ever bearing type and then i picked these up at the beginning of the season they are a bare root strawberry they are ozark beauty um and they bloom i they bloom i believe these only produce fruit once a year and it, it honestly may be too late in the season to harvest fruit from these this year i should have gotten them in the ground a lot sooner but best laid intentions. There are 10 plants in here, so the other two spots in each of this row will be these Ozark Beauties. So I will have two sweet berries and two Ozark Beauties for each square in my strawberry row. And even if these do not produce anything this year, strawberry plants typically will last for quite a while, many years, if they are happy. Even if the mother plant dies off, once you do allow them to put off runners, you can have a whole bed of them. So eventually, I would like to have a whole bed of strawberries. They're one of those fruits that I could eat every day, and you need about seven or eight plants to harvest enough berries from one person frequently. So, yeah. But I don't want to spend the money to purchase an entire bed of strawberries in one year. So we're gonna start with a row, and then we will let them slowly spread across the bed until maybe a few years from now we have more strawberry plants. For now, one row is good enough. So right next to those, I'm going to seed an entire row of carrots. We will see how these do. I have heard conflicting things about seeding carrots and how easy or hard they are, but I'm gonna try it. We're gonna, we're gonna sow a row of them and just see how they go. The next two rows, I'm going to sow these uh, snap beans. So these are a heirloom blue lake bush. They are a bush green bean that do not need a trellis. And those will be the last two rows. So I am pretty excited about this. And I just, I just want to see, you know, this first year I've done strawberries before. I've done cucumbers before. I've done watermelon before. Um, but I've never done carrots, I've never done green beans, I've never done potatoes or sweet potatoes. So this year is kind of a experiment and we'll just see what grows best where. And I've done some research on companion planting. So we'll see what does well with what. And you know, next year we may change it up. But for this year, this is what we're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna see if we can't plant everything. Nice, happy little plants. So, I guess let's start with the strawberries. Let's start by opening these and see how they even look. I'm a little worried 
we're gonna open these and just find a bunch of dead strawberry tubers. I'm not sure what a dead versus a live strawberry tuber even looks like. I'm calling them tubers. They're technically bare root, I guess. Lots of dirt. So far, I'm not finding any. Okay, so if these are supposed to be plants, they are definitely not 10 of them. I'm not even finding a place to separate whatever this is. So perhaps this is no longer viable, I'm not sure. I think I'm just gonna plant this as one piece means we won't have two per bed, but we'll plant it. I don't think it's alive. I didn't buy this that long ago, but apparently long enough. So on to the sweet berries. They look fabulous. <laughs> oh, you know, you win some, you lose some. That pack was $5. Obviously there's a reason the pack was $5, whereas these are $5 a plant. If you've ever planted strawberries from bare root like that before, let me know. I just wait too long. If I planted those immediately, would they have been fine? I bought them at the same time as the potatoes that I'm growing behind me, and I checked those yesterday. They're fine, but potatoes are, you know, they're a different beast. these strawberries in their containers this morning so I wasn't sure if I was going to get to this project or not. They are still very wet. Might not even need to water them in. Alright, two plants down. All right, so we've got all our beans planted, two rows. These are supposed to be eight inches apart. So I'm not 100% sure I didn't look up the rule on one per square foot, but I had a nine pack right here. So I just went ahead and did one per square, except for this one. This little guy is looking the roughest and I had two since I had nine. So I went ahead and put two in that square and we will see, but I mean, that's roughly eight inches apart. So even if I could fit two per square foot, I think this will be fine, especially for this first year where I'm just trying stuff. The entire garden is not going to be full. I'm not even going to be using these six beds this year because 
need to buy more dirt. <laughs> I sowed two rows of carrots here. There are lots of different methods. Carrot seeds are tiny. Of all the methods that I watched, one that looked the best to me was to make a trench, sow a whole bunch of seeds in it, and then lightly cover it with soil. They need to be covered with about a quarter inch of soil. Some people just push them in. Some people put a board on top of them, which the board method looked awesome. But with my grow grid, I would have to like cut tiny squares to fit in. So I decided on the trench method. I still have lots of carrot seeds. If none of them germinate, we'll try again. And if that doesn't work, then we'll do something else. Strawberries look great, even with just two per square and not four. It looks very full. So hopefully eight plants will get some strawberries out of this. The only thing I'm worried about is I have grown strawberries in my stock tank right here. Um, around the base, this is where I typically do my cucumber and watermelons up the trellises. And the strawberries just got ate by... I don't know if it was bugs or small animals, but something when I planted them around the base. And so I started growing my strawberries in hanging baskets last year. You can see my ones from last year starting to come back. Um, and they did great. So I will have these strawberries if they grow up. This water is turned on, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I need to replant this guy because they did not seem to come back in that planter. But... We'll see. So hopefully they do not get eaten. If they do, if this bed doesn't work well for strawberries, then next year I will take out some of the dirt, lower it, and build a chicken wire top for the whole bed because that seems to help keep out pests more than anything. I could also put some cloches over these this year. I'm not going to borrow trouble. We'll just see how they do. If I can find some cloches that will fit around these grids, then we'll probably pop those on. But for now, let's come over here. We have our Sweet Alyssa. This is one of my clearance rack pieces. It is white night. If you watch my, <laughs> I have a whole video coming out about Alyssa. I plant three of these white nights, a snow princess, and some that I've seeded that's called Carpet of Snow. I want to do a comparison on how all three do in our hot sun. Because here in 8B, Alabama, typically sweet alyssum just cannot last through our summers. It gets so hot that it just dies. So I bought some varieties that are supposed to be able to handle the heat. This is one of them. And I've sown some and we're going to just see what happens. But then I have seed potatoes. These are Yukon Golds. I checked them, they are all sprouting. So eight of those and some sweet potatoes. These are the Beauregards. So I have, I think six of those. So I'll probably separate two of them because a bunch of them have more than one plant. So two rows of sweet potatoes, two rows of potatoes. Since I only have six sweet potatoes, I'm gonna put the alyssum in one of those spots. So I'll only have to separate one or I might just put this like really close and take up two spots. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and start planting these, right Biddy Biddy? Biddy's not listening to us. But if you caught any of my seed videos earlier this week, almost all of the cosmos and the zinnia seeds are already up. Then my original watermelon cucumber bed video. The marigolds are also up. So there is life in the garden yet. Let's finish because it's getting hot and I want to go inside. Okay, we are all finished. 
So I planted the potatoes about three to four inches deep. And once I see sprouts, I will come out and put three to four inches more of soil on top. Uh, the sweet potatoes look great. Although when I tried to split them, all of the shoots seemed to go back to one plant. So I did not split anything. I just went ahead and planted that white knight sweet alyssum right on the like edge and right in the middle. And that guy can get up to 18 inches wide minimum. So if he's happy here, he'll take over both squares. It's not, not a huge deal either way. Um, this doesn't have to be a, you know, floor to floor, carpet to carpet kind of planting situation. But potato bed done. Strawberry beans, carrot bean, bean, carrot bed done. I am hot and sweaty. I'm gonna water these in go inside and take a break. So I will let y'all know we will do updates of the cut flower slash fruit and vegetable garden as the season goes on. But I'm very excited. That's all six beds that I'm planting finished. I have plans for the other six beds for some fall, winter crops, pumpkins, um, lettuces, things of that nature that in my climate need to be done more in the cold. But for this season, we're just not going to do all 12 beds because you can't, you got to walk before you can run. And we still don't even have anything down in between the beds. I got to get some um, mulch or some pea gravel or something down for the walkways. So I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. If I did something wrong, let me know because I'm still not sure I planted everything correctly. I will see y'all in the next video. And if you want to go back to the beginning, I have all the things for my raised beds, including building them, filling them, adding seeds, growing watermelon, adding teepees in a playlist. And I will leave it right here so you can check out whatever you like. Bye.